Okay, let's talk about shingle spacing, the offset, how far over every shingle next course needs to be. So here's the question. Not using your offcuts for rows four, five, and six? Hi, doing my first full shingle job tomorrow. Going through the manufacturer instructions for their shingles, they don't want you to use your smaller offcuts to start the top rows, four, five, and six. And I'm wondering why. And if anyone has any insight, these are architectural shingles. Instead of a full stair strip using all of the offcuts, like every other shingle I've seen, they only want three of the largest cuts, then starting with a fresh full shingle. Seems like a lot of waste. Manufacturer recommend top, full, 39, 3 eighths, then cut off 17, 11, 6, etc. Opposed to what I was planning, a full... Yeah, anyways. Anyone know the why... Anyone know the reasoning why? I presume the thought is that the larger shingles may provide a better adhesion. Anyone done the full step and had any issues? What about warranty? Anyone denied a warranty because they didn't do the correct pattern? Thanks, gents. Okay. You didn't say what manufacturer you're using, but it's okay. I know. It's GAF. And what is the deal? Well, let's talk about what the deal is. Okay. So here's what the manufacturer is saying. Full shingle down on top of the starter then cut six inches off of the second shingle. Then for your third course, you cut 11 inches off. And finally, on the last course, cut 17 inches off. So you're running four courses to make your set of steps. Then you'll take those three pieces and save them for the other end of the roof. You will put a full shingle on again, as you can see right up here, to start this four shingle step pattern. Now, through all of that, GAF doesn't take a minute in their, in their new installation instructions to explain why. Well, there's a, there's a reason why, and it's not what you would think. You know, the, the, uh, the person wanted to ask, is, is it for adhesion so that maybe they, they seal better and give you better wind resistance? No. Is it for better water flow and shedding of the water? No. What does GAF say? I'll put a link in, in, the, uh, in the YouTube description for this video on if you see it on YouTube. But it's to a technical bulletin. And it's in this technical bulletin where we find our answer. GAF Technical Advisory Bulletin. <laughs> Here we are. Again, I'll, I'll put the link in there so you can go find it yourself. Okay, so the Technical Advisory Bulletin is going to give us our answers. This one from GAF is specifically in regards to shingle offsets. Now, they define shingle offsets. They are the horizontal distances between joints or end gaps of shingles applied on one course in relation to joints on consecutive courses as you're going up. So, again, that stair step pattern that we're used to seeing. Offsets ensure that the joints between shingles will align over the headlap portion of the underlying shingle and not over another joint. You never want to have joint on top of joint. I got a picture of some crazy ones. Joints that are not offset or are not offset by more than four inches or 102 millimeters for those of you in Canada and other parts of the world allow for the opportunity for the roof to leak in heavy rains or on lower slopes. Now, here's where we get a little contention because some manufacturers, you know, you're, you saw their numbers and they told you cut six inches and 11 and 17 and other manufacturers say eight. I've heard other roofers say, I, I got at least 10 inches a step over. Okay. But here's what the manufacturers say. I know that they have their diagram and their, this is how you, we want you to do it. But right here is what their parameters really are. The minimal, ox, the minimal acceptable offset recommended by GAF and the Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association is four inches or 102 millimeters between joints on succeeding courses. The joint offset for a particular product may be greater than four inches, whether to avoid the potential for leaks or for the aesthetic appearance. There's your answer. That's what they really are trying to get you to do. It has nothing to do with better ceiling. It's for the aesthetic. It's for the looks. They want it to be pretty. <clears throat> the aesthetic appearance of the finished roof. The recommended minimum shingle joint offset should be followed for the product being installed. 
So at the end of the day, for your regard, your concerns about warranty, right there, the recommended minimum shingle joint offset should be followed for the product being installed. Now, I'm just a guy on the internet, and you don't have to take my word for it. Now, you're going to install on a Saturday, so you're not going to get a hold of anybody at GAF, but I, odds of having to make a warranty claim are pretty slim. But at the end of the day, I've talked to a lot of these manufacturers, and you know what they always tell you? They only warranty a defective shingle. They're not going to, so if, you know, the, the war, of how, the, how the work's done, they don't, they don't warranty any of that. I mean, yes, there are some special warranties that you can buy from contractors that are in their programs and stuff, but at the end of the day, if the shingle's defective, they've, they've got to cover it. But <clears throat> so, again, here, here we're going on to our answer, and this is down here. Yeah, I should. Okay. For the best aesthetic peer appearance and to ensure that the joint offset is acceptable, GAF recommends that shingles be installed in accordance with the application instructions printed on the bundle wrappers. There are a few other things to understand about shingle offsets. Offsets are a measured distance between joints on succeeding courses and are not measured from any specific reference point on the roof, such as an edge or a valley. To prevent joint offsets from aligning in a leak-prone area, such as valleys or at roof penetrations, offsets must be adjusted to not less than four inches from the shingle joint on the course below. Additional adjustments may be necessary at roof penetrations to return to the consistent offset of the prior courses. Make sure that no end joint is within two inches from any nail in an underlying course. That's a big deal right there. So that's nails in the key ways, as some as people will call it. If the starter shingle is a different length than the shingle being installed, which is very common, be sure to make adjustments as necessary to maintain a minimum of four inches offset. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck being that guy that your starters and first shingle align are really close, and then you have a leak right at the bottom of your roof. So you want to watch that offset even down there at the starter course. Now, why are they worried about aesthetics? I'm going to show you. This happened in Phoenix, Arizona. This is a different brand of shingles. This was IKOs. And uh, this is very dramatic. This is actually a problem at the factory with their coloring. But I, I'm going to show this to you just to demonstrate what they're really, they don't want you to see every stinking course, and they want the colors to blend. And they're trying to have a randomized pattern. And so what they don't want is for you to see every shingle and where they join. And they're just trying to hide that from the untrained eye, okay? So they want, you know, this is randomized. And they're hoping that by this crazy pattern of nailing and installation they're giving you, that they'll even be more randomized to try to prevent what I'm going to show you now. So you can see here, these shingles look terrible and these are new shingles and you can see the contrast and and both of them came out of bundles that said white and uh these were iko shingles i'll show you another picture and right there now again this is a, a bad batch. This is a bad product. This was this was a mess. But I, I'm using these pictures to illustrate how when you look at this, you can clearly see, even with an untrained eye, you can see all the rows going up and down. And that is what they're trying to avoid when they say aesthetic appearance. So at the end of the day, you might want to follow that uh, nailing pattern if you still want to use that. Frankly, if I'm installing the roof, I'm going to put the my stair steps up. I'm not going to do that crazy stuff. And um, I've never had a problem with it. But you may want to talk to your local supplier or call GAF or just follow the instructions at the end of the day. That probably is the very best. And that's the most prudent course of action. So, yeah, it's all about just making it look pretty. At the end of the day, it's all for aesthetics, not for leaking not for sealing anything. It's just to make your roof look prettier, they hope. Crazy answer. Hope that helps you. Happy roofing.